We are back again with another edition of our Cost of the Week Lunch and Learn. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jacqueline Hernandez, Associate Director for the Combined Federal Campaign. This week's cause is animal welfare. From the pets who share our homes to the awe-inspiring creatures of the deep sea, our lives are enriched by our association with animals. We have a few charitable organizations joining us today to share how the work supports animal welfare. Hello, my name is Stacey Morziato, and I am the Associate Director for the Combined Federal Campaign. Joining us today is Charles Saltzman from the Humane Society of Florida, located in Boca Raton, Florida. Welcome, Charles. Hi, Stacey. Thank you for having me, and I want to thank everybody out there for taking the time to review this video. As a reminder, our CFC number at the Humane Society of Florida is 70713. Thank you. Thank you for that information, Charles. Would you mind telling us a little bit about the Humane Society of Florida and how the organization got started and when? Sure. Humane Society of Florida was organized in 2016 for committed rescuers who do not have the resources on their own to set up their small groups. We offer various rescue homes in South Florida the opportunity to operate under a common umbrella so they can take dogs from the shelters and care for them in their own homes. One ironclad prerequisite is that we not accept surrender dogs direct from the public under any circumstances. We realize that surrenders of pets will never be eliminated, but as a matter of conscience, we will not contribute to it or enable it. We now have 10 foster homes in South Florida within Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties. Wonderful, thank you for that information. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, how the CFC has impacted your mission? Absolutely. Since inception, we have saved over 1,300 dogs. Donations are critical to maintaining our one and only program. The CFC has been a wonderful, dependable resource for our group. Adoption fees comprise only about one third of our total revenues. Therefore, we have to rely upon these outside donations like the CFC. Wonderful. And would you mind just telling uh, our federal employees a little bit more about your organization? Sure. I'd like to describe our program. We rescue at-risk dogs from kill shelters. We care for them in a limited population foster care environment that gives the dogs a healthier and better home experience. Most dogs we rescue are two to seven years old. The Humane Society of Florida does not take in puppies or dogs under a year of age. Our foster homes accommodate just two or three dogs at any one point in time, creating that better foster environment. More importantly, we use what is known as the ASPCA's Adoption Ambassador Model. This means that each one of our foster caregivers has the freedom to arrange, approve, and deliver their own adoptions. The biggest advantage of this model is a more effective method to attract a potential, ad a potential adopters. The dogs wear Adopt Me vests, while out in public, so it's abundantly clear that the dog is available for adoption. This is the most successful method to generate on-the-spot adoption inquiries. Another significant advantage with this more direct hands-on approach is that we realize a lower level of animal returns. We are able to import, impart more relevant information and potential adopters get to see the dog they normally visit in their normal day and they can envision what life might be like with that dog. Oh, wonderful information. Thank you for that. And would you mind telling us a short story about uh, how one of the recipients uh, have benefited from your organization? I love these things. Uh, we have a lot of very wonderful stories, but one that stands out in particular, at the beginning of this year, one of our foster homes took in a wonderful I use that word wonderful a lot, don't I? Uh, standard Schnauzer, it had a rare genetic blood disorder. Jacques was purchased by his original owners and being a purebred, they weren't terribly thrilled when he was diagnosed with von Willen's disease. Since these people just couldn't be bothered with a dog that wasn't perfect, Jacques was surrendered to a municipal shelter and that's where we came in. Jacques was quickly adopted and renamed Augustine, Orgy Doggy. Their son, Jason, had recently been diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, a high functioning form of autism. We felt this would be a great match and it has proven to be just that. This picture shows Jason with both Augie Doggy and his sister, Jocelyn. Oh, uh, that was so cute. 
Well, that is such an amazing story. And we, we, we're so grateful that you have taken the time to share with us uh, some information and your time about your organization. We thank you so much for that. Thank you very much. And just as a final reminder, our CFC number here at the Humane Society of Florida is 70713. Thank you to everybody who has taken the time to uh, your valuable time to review this video, and I wish you the best today. Thank you. Uh, we have the Best Friends Pet Assisted Therapy, and we have Millie. Oh my <laughs> God, you gotta see Millie. Uh, Millie's hiding behind the table here. Millie, <laughs> hey, girly girl. She's like, yeah, no, I'll <laughs> let you pet me. She's a golden retriever. She's yes. gorgeous, and, um, I mean, I'm so glad you brought Millie. I'll take care of her. Okay. If you'll just tell us <laughs> what what your organization does. I mean, it's in the title, right, Karen? But right. I, just tell me more about what you do and, and how you got to where you're at. Okay. Um, Best Friends um, is an organization that uh, educates and nationally certifies uh, volunteers and their pets uh, for pet assisted therapy. So um, we serve the Miami Valley. We started in just Clark County, but now mm -hmm. we um, go as far north as Logan County, uh, as far south as Greene County, um, Dark County, and every county in between. Um, so when they first started, um, primarily these pets were just going to medical facilities. Okay. So now we've just expanded. Um, we have teams that go to the Dayton International Airport mm -hmm. and um, are there for passengers that might be nervous to get on a plane or we have uh, teams that um, uh, do the honor flight for oh, okay, veterans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we send them off and then we're there when they return. Um, we have teams that are part of the Springfield City Schools uh, crisis uh, okay. team. Um, and of course we visit hospitals and nursing homes and cancer centers and um, schools. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, Millie and I are just getting ready to embark on uh, some uh, dog safety education with the students at West Liberty Salem Elementary. Um, so we're going to be doing that. <laughs> so yeah, she's, so she's so good. She is a sweetheart. So now do you have, uh, are they all goldens? Are they different breeds? No, any uh, different animals? Any kind of dog can okay, be a just dogs dog. Though. Okay. Uh, primarily, I think there are other um, pets that could be therapy um, pets, but I just have experience with dogs and most yeah. of the people that I um, know through best friends okay. use dogs. So, And how would somebody go about uh, getting in touch with your organization if they wanted to get a pet therapy session or have right. that kind of interaction on a regular okay. basis with their organization? The best way to contact us is through the website um, www.bestfriendspetassistedtherapy.org. It's not long at all. <laughs> No spaces and it's not cap sensitive. So, so um, it's www pet best friends best friends pet assisted therapy dot org. Yes, okay, <laughs> it's a long name, but um, that's probably the best place to start. Okay, um, and you can uh, find all the information um, about what we do and the orientations that we um, do uh, several times a year for the. Um, training and certification of the volunteers and their pets. So so if I had a dog mm -hmm. and I thought they were pretty good temper, mm -hmm. I could bring them and get certified with you guys if I was able to make it through the, the yeah. different classes and everything. Right, the orientation is usually three weekends um, and then the last day um, is the testing process. So they um, do a great job um, preparing you and uh, you know, your dog, I mean, you want a, obviously a, you know, a very well-mannered dog to begin <laughs> yeah. with, but um, yeah, they do a great job getting them ready and uh, nationally certifying them. I think she's taking a nap. I might have tired her out when she first got here because I was really excited. Um, she's over this. She's like, eh. <laughs> Well, and when the pandemic hit, this was something that we talked about at work was we had a lot of people that with the uncertainty of everything that was going on and you know, they, I had a friend that had a pet therapy dog. Mm -hmm. And so we had a couple times, she brought her dog in yeah. and it was kind of, 
not the norm at Wright Patterson. You don't mm -hmm. usually when you see a dog come into a building, it's a working dog, and so everybody's right. kind of like, Ugh. Right. but this one was like, I want to see you. So it was really great to have that, and it made a huge difference for oh, a lot yeah. of people. COVID definitely had an impact, but we're really starting to get back out there, and um, you know, like I said, in the schools and um, hospitals, I think are still a little um, tricky, but um, you know, we're doing the best we can. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Is there anything that you want to close with, you know, for people to know what to do to donate for you? Or if you want to give your website again, because I kind of messed that <laughs> whole can thing do that up. At the end. Um, yeah. Basically, um, we're a nonprofit organization. We're the only pet assisted therapy uh, group in the area that is nonprofit. Mm -hmm. um, so um, only 5.8% of our um, donations goes to administrative fees. The rest of it goes right into the cause, um, pays for the training, the certification, the outfitting of the dogs with the mm -hmm. vests and the shirts and, and everything that you need. Yeah. Um, so to outfit a team, it's about $140. So mm -hmm. we've got um, an orientation class going on this month. We have about 10 groups, I think. And then upcoming, we've got uh, about 23 groups that want to be certified so that's over three thousand dollars right just to outfit those volunteers and get them ready to you know go into um the community and, and that's and a huge percentage you're putting back in yes. so yes. basically what she's saying is if you donate a dollar 95 point six <laughs> percent of that is yeah. going to pay for the actual yes. good work that's done and less than five percent is what they yes. use for administrative and that's costs. pretty unusual i think for that, a nonprofit. that is so yeah. Well, I appreciate so, you sharing that with us well, and telling us. And if you want to give your website yes. one more time, that would be fantastic. www.bestfriendspetassistedtherapy.org and CFC number 87635. Awesome. My name is Julie Dudley, and I'm one of the associate directors for the Combined Federal Campaign. Our cause of the week is animal welfare. I have the great pleasure in introducing Connor Gillespie, Outreach Coordinator from Wildlife Center of Virginia. Welcome, Connor. Thank you, Julie. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to tell you all a little bit about what the Wildlife Center is. And we're excited to hear. Can you tell our federal workers and retirees, what is the Wildlife Center of Virginia? Yeah, so the Wildlife Center of Virginia is a nonprofit hospital for native wildlife. Um, we, what that means is basically that we can take in injured animals that are found right here in Virginia um, and hopefully treat them and release them back into the wild. Uh, we were founded back in 1982 and at the time we were one of the first and only hospitals built with that purpose in mind. Um, and now we're actually approaching our, our 40th anniversary. And over that time span, we have admitted more than 85,000 patients uh, to our hospital. And what does the Wildlife Center of Virginia do? Yeah, so our main, one of our main functions is to treat the injured, ill, or orphaned wildlife that comes through our doors um, with the goal of releasing them back into the wild. Um, so we have a full-time veterinary staff that's comprised of veterinarians and veterinary technicians that have a diverse set of skills that they can apply to the wide range of animals that come through our doors, this, you know, of all different species of birds, uh, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, um, and they can work with animals that are as small as toads and um, salamanders and rabbits, all the way up to animals that are as large as woodchucks, beavers, um, hawks, eagles, even black bears. And, and what they're going to do when, it, when an animal first gets to our hospital is they're going to, you know, do an exam, figure out what's wrong with it, and try to get it healthy. Um, so whether that means, you know, fixing broken bones, uh, maybe managing some wounds they have, um, and then once they're healthy, the next step is our rehabilitation staff will take care of them because even when they're healthy, um, that doesn't mean they're, they're quite ready to go back into the wild yet. Our, our rehab staff will do, you can kind of think of them as our physical therapists or our PE teachers. So they'll, uh, they'll do some exercises with the animals to make sure that they have the strength and the stamina um, to go back into the wild. And then if they're able to pass all their tests and they can be released, that is the best case scenario for us. Um, but we do a lot more than just treat injured animals here. 
Um, a big part of what we do is we, for each case, we take the lessons that we learn and we share them with the public here in Virginia. We share them with the millions of school children and adults um, found right here in the state of Virginia and really all over the country and all over the world so we can hopefully um, learn from what happened to them and prevent them from, you know, being admitted in the first place, you know, teach people about ways to prevent those injuries from occurring. Um, and one other thing that we do is we're actually also a teaching hospital for other students or externs or interns in the veterinary field. So we regularly have um, students here at our facility to learn from our staff, learn from our veterinarians, our rehab staff to take the skills and apply those to other wildlife centers or other organizations and agencies. Awesome. And why should donors support the Wildlife Center of Virginia? Yeah, I think something that's really unique about the Wildlife Center is that we're large enough to make a difference all around the world, uh, but we're also small enough that every single donation makes, makes a real difference. Um, as a nonprofit, we strive to be efficient and effective and really limit administrative costs to a bare minimum. So that when someone donates to our center, that money really is going right to the life-saving work with the animals that we see coming through our doors. Um, and what I would encourage anyone to do that's interested in donating to the Wildlife Center of Virginia is take a look at our website. Um, it'd be a great chance to learn more about us. We always are posting patient stories, the different things we learn here at our center and what we're doing. And it's a great way to learn more about us. Well, thank you, Donna, for joining us today and for, for sharing the work that you carry out. Thank you again for having me, Julie. And to all the federal workers and retirees out there, thank you for your generosity, both in the past and in the future. Um, we really couldn't, couldn't do what we do without your support. So we're really grateful. If you care about animal welfare, help support our animals with fur, feathers, and fins. A big shout out to all of the organizations who were able to join us this week. Remember, you can be a change maker. You can be the face of change at givecfc.org.